How do? Another absolutely sad case, something that should have never happened. So to start this video, I'm going to mention the victims' names. We've got Teddy Harris, her two kids, John and Lacey, and a family friend, Connie Gent. All butchered. Butchered by the monster, the creature in the title. Failings of the probation service. Just come out this month. Murders happened in 2021. The guy's now serving whole of life. For me, for me, anyone getting whole of life, definitely capital punishment. I am a believer. Lethal injection. However you want to... Come on, kid. Out you go. However you want to frame it, I am a fan. Whole of life. We're keeping them in prison at a cost to us. They're never getting out. Some of them can be very dangerous for the people that work in prisons. Civilian psychologists and prison officers. Let's just get shot. It's never going to happen. Capital punishment, but people ask, I am a fan. A couple of probation officers sending me messages. One of my friends now, who's a probation officer, who's leaving the service. She is, he's swimming. She is, um, at her wits end, stressed, fed up, fed up of being um, talked down to, put down and threatened. Threatened with whistleblowing. Not whistleblowing against her, her mentioning whistleblowing and being threatened. A friend has just mentioned two barristers. Two barristers who've packed a job in because they're disillusioned with the Crown Prosecution Service. Coppers messaging me. Stuck in a rut, in a job, pensions, families to think of, sick to death of working hard to get paedophiles and rapists to court to be slapped in the face by the system walking free it's disgusting so this guy all the signs were there the last five minutes of this video like i say i'll read the findings normally i'd pin the comment but I think it's quite pertinent that people know the failings of the probation service and other services. You know, in this case, I believe it says two people have faced disciplinary action. You can bet your life they're newcomers to the job, people who've joined the probation service, no idea what they were doing, done a very weak report. This guy, the creature, like I said, low risk to children and medium risk for everything else. He should have been high risk. Should have been in prison for arson. Arson is a serious offence. He walked away. Again, it's just sickening. Yeah? But the person at the bottom of the pile, yeah, who's done a report and it's not an adequate report, there is a tier of people yeah a system you can't blame it on one person you can't blame it on inexperience i know for a pact you know people are medium risk getting privileges in the community staying in these approved premises and the like and they're fucking dangerous yeah they're not being monitored people don't know what they're doing you know, paedophiles and rapists can go out and commit atrocious acts and come back to the premises and no one's going to be any the wiser. Probation service overworked and flat on its ass. Absolutely flat on its ass. The experienced staff, like the prison service, and like the police and everything else, Crown Prosecution Service, are walking out, they're leaving in droves. They're not being listened to. Weak management, not acting 
not acting on information, not supporting staff, not supporting experienced staff, leaving the public at risk. All the signs were there for this fella, all the signs, yeah? A probation report is just that. You look at multiple agencies, gather information and do a report. You look at his previous history, maybe information from the police. Again, criticized, criticized for not sharing information. How can it be in this day and age that our criminal justice system is not sharing all information? If someone's name's in there like this creature and police have information and probation and other agencies and prison have information, it should all be there, yeah? So you can read it all and you can compile a report based on all that information. You can come to a sensible conclusion. This guy would have been high risk. Young lady, three kids, dead. Truly shocking. I doubt very much the outcome of the coroner's report, findings that have been published will give anyone any relief or anything else, it'll probably just sicken family and friends even more. God bless them all. And we should be remembering the victims and not the perpetrators. For him, for me, it should be gone off the planet. Parting shot as always. Thanks for your continued support as a community. Thanks for support for guests, past, present and future, people who support me on Patreon, people who bought me a brew, and people who support me and Stephen in the comment section. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. I'll see they. As promised, I'm just going to read you this. Normally I just put report in pinned comment, but I think it is very relevant and it's important to know these things. The probation service accepted 51 separate failings at the inquest she examined how Bendel, who had a history of serious and violent offences dating back to 2004, was classed as posing a low risk of serious harm to partners and children. Bendel's history and allegations of domestic abuse against a former partner and inappropriate contact with a young girl in care were missed due to failure to demonstrate sufficient professional curiosity, Mr Nito said. Like I said, the police had a lot of this information. That was an important piece of information to be prominently recorded in the probation report. If it had been, it appears to me inconceivable that Damien Bendel would not have been considered to be high risk to children. A damning report published in January said the probation services handling him was an unacceptable standard at every stage and critical opportunities to correct errors were missed before he murdered his victims. He had been on probation serving a suspended prison sentence for arson. Arson's a serious offence. That's going to make you high risk in my eyes any day of the week. Bendel gave Mrs. Harris address for his curfew order and was living with her and her children despite previous convictions for violent crime and allegations of domestic abuse made by a former partner. The inquest heard from members of staff at the probation service based in Swindon and Chesterfield which both dealt with Bendel in relation to previous offences who said they struggled with high workloads and stress. Undoubtedly. The Chief Probation Officer for England and Wales Kim Thorndon Edwards said the service was facing significant challenges when it was dealing with Bendel but major changes continue to be made to prevent similar tragic incident from happening again. Mr Nito said safeguarding checks were not completed. No effort made to speak to Miss Harris and her children to assess whether a curfew at her property was suitable. <laughs> what the fuck? It's not even laughable, is it? Something the probation service admitted was unacceptable. As part of his entirely inappropriate and dangerous curfew, Bendel was made to wear an electronic tag 
during the fitting of which he said, quote, if this relationship goes bad, I will murder my girlfriend and her children. But these comments were not fed back to the probation service, even though they should clearly have been. Inadequate guidance and supervision by managers allowed other intervention opportunities to be missed, including Bendel admitting he was using cannabis and strong alcohol, fucking hell, and at least missing five meetings with a substance misuse worker, which the coroner said should have prompted a review of his risk level. No shit. While Mr Nito acknowledged the impacts of changes to the probation service in the months before the murders and of COVID, he said, they don't explain the total totality, the acts or omissions or failures of the probation services overview and supervision of Damien Bendel and the decisions made. Following the coroner's conclusion, lawyer David Saniford, who represented the probation service throughout the inquest, said, We extend afresh our deepest sympathies to the relatives of Terry Harris, Lacey Bennett, John Paul Bennett and Connie Gent, and indeed all those who mourn them. Damien Bendel is rightly serving a whole life order. We recognise that the changes made with a view to ensuring that this doesn't happen again can never undo the terrible losses or the grief of those lives will never be the same again. Closing the inquest, Mr Nito said he would write a prevention of future deaths reports and extended his condolences to the victims, family and friends after a difficult two weeks. What a very sad state of affairs. It's no better right now, I'll tell you. Like I said, alas I know, he's leaving the probation service. She is employed to write reports because she's very good at them. Basically, a report should include as much information as possible. But knowing what I know about this case, you know, you don't have to be a professional or anything else. This guy, obviously was high risk and it was just wholly inappropriate, a very, very sad case. God bless them, families and friends. I'll see you there.